All right, guys, we are back, and today is our last video in the lead up, the preview of Low Hands Logan, aka the Admiral of Arm Punches versus Grandpa Floyd, aka Mr. Hairline Hostility. We've done breakdowns on sparring footage, training footage. We watched Logan brush off Ryan Garcia's advice like he was in the Jay Z song trying to get that dirt off his shoulder. <laughs> I gotta admit, I'm pumped up today. I'm excited, and it has nothing to do with this fight because I give less of a shit about this fight than the one I just took about five minutes ago that I pinched off halfway through because I wanted to come and get this video to you guys. But what I do care about is seeing you guys on June 6th watching this circus act go on and we're gonna make something fun out of it. It's gonna be entertaining, I know that. I think we're gonna go live around 5 p.m. Make sure you're following me on Twitter to get that confirmation that's at Wade Flynn. But now, we gotta get into this. We got some rule updates. We got Logan in his open workout. Has he improved anything? And you guys are gonna get my final prediction. So, let's take a look at this thing. Logan Paul, Floyd Mayweather, the final breakdown. Let's go. So before we get into any sparring or open workout footage from Logan, they released the rule set for this exhibition, which you guys knew coming in, this was an exhibition. No headgear, we knew that. There are gonna be knockouts. This is great. Everything's going fine. There's no winner or loser and there's no judges. Unless someone gets knocked out, nobody wins. The fans get their money took, and these guys ride off into the sunset with their horses hooked up to the same wagon, dragging millions of dollars behind them after cosplaying boxers for 30 minutes. But anyway, Logan Paul, the final breakdown before his and Floyd Mayweather's epic glove touching exhibition. Let's go. Uh, this is Logan hitting quite literally the biggest heavy bag I may have ever seen in my life. Does he have Floyd Mayweather actually in this bag? What you're gonna see out of a lot of this, in my opinion, you're gonna see Logan with quick hands, maybe some power, but a lot of arm punches. That hook's good. I like that. Yeah, that's a nice turnover of the hook to the body. That three to the body's nice. Obviously, hand speed is always there with Logan. That's one of the things that allows him in his mind and in Milton's mind to fight the way he does. I think we're gonna see typical Logan here. He's got some power because he's jacked up to the gills and his arm looks like most people's stomachs. And he's gonna rely on his, his speed and his head movement defensively. It's not gonna be enough, but that's what I think we're gonna see. Like that. But it's just Logan's foundation of boxing. It's not pro level right now, right? He's not a high level pro. And his foundation is built on arm punches, head movement, and fast hands. It's not built on the fundamentals. Chin down, hands up. That jab's nice. That's a nice jab. It's not even worth the time to continue to show you guys how when he throws shots, where his hands return to because they return to the same place always. It doesn't matter where the shot comes from or where it goes to. The shots always return to his waist or his hips. What's in store for Floyd this Sunday? What's in store for Floyd, they said. Decapitation. Ruthlessness, brutality, abuse. Huh. What did he just say? Ruthlessness, brutality, abuse. I know Logan's a big Pokemon fan, but when he was asked what is in store for Floyd on Sunday, he said decapitation, ruthlessness, and then he named one of the lower level mouse Pokemon. He said Rattata Abuse, unless I heard him wrong. <laughs> I don't know if he's calling Floyd a mouse or why his mind is on Pokemon at all. Maybe he just wants to scan some more of his fans with his NFTs for Pokemon box openings because NFTs, as we all know, they don't mean anything. You guys can take an NFT of these pearly whites and these baby blues right now. And you know what the best thing to do with it at that point is? You find a way to print it. Now you got it on your piece of paper. You take that, wipe your fucking ass with it and throw it in the toilet because that's the amount of value that you get from these fucking NFTs. Stop getting scammed by Logan and his YouTube friends. These NFTs don't mean shit. Well, double jab. I do like Logan's jab. Logan's jab and his uppercut off his backhand. Like, look at that jab. That's a nice jab to end off right there at the end of the round. Boom, 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 boom. He is utilizing all of his 76 inch reach and he's landing it flush and the shoulders over his chin. That stuff's nice. It's not the jab itself that's so lazy sometimes from Logan. Like he can pop it out there and it lands flush. It's the return of it. That's what I'm always concerned about with Logan, right? Jab looks nice. Jab looks nice, but you can't see it. It's right down here by his hip, right? It's boom, boom, fall. All right, so what we see there from Logan, it's more of the same, guys. We are not going to get a Logan that is far different than he's shown us. When you lay your cards out on the table and you show us what you got, there's no real hiding anything else. Now, he might not have meant to do that, but we've seen Logan. We've seen the hands by his waist. We've seen him pop the jab out and immediately drop his lead hand. I think at this point, we know exactly what Logan we're going to get. It's not a secret. For the most part, he throws arm punches when they're not jab right hands. His lead hook there on the bag, he activates his hip, so fair play. I like that. 
but we've seen him continually throw arm punches and that's why he gets so blown up in his biceps and in his shoulders. That's gonna happen regardless, but when it's all you rely on, you're gonna fatigue very quickly. So there's not any real surprise here, but let's take a look at him on the mitts and see if, if maybe when they get him to move, when he's not just stationary, if things start to break down, if his technique starts to decompartmentalize and kind of fall all over the place. But again, I could be wrong. So let's take a look at his mitt work and see. These are arm punches. That lead uppercut is, is an arm punch. He's using only his arms. There is no hip activation here with this. He is literally just flopping his arm forward as he's trying to throw his lead uppercut. And this has always been his problem. It's arm punches and slappy shots. Watch again. Logan's a big, strong guy. So yeah, those shots are gonna hurt because he's 190 pounds of pure fucking muscle. Of course, those shots are gonna hurt, but they're not what they could be. Just again, if his base was built on a little more technique, he could be sending people to the fucking moon with that shot. But again, he relies on his hand speed and arm punches and because he's a big, strong guy, he can get away with it. That's a little better. Again, look at the difference in his backhand uppercut versus his lead hand. Look at the hip activation. Look at the hands high. Why not the same emphasis as we see right here? Hand high, hip rotation on that lead uppercut. I don't get it, but this is a good shot. This is his best shot in my opinion. <laughs> Milton counters Logan with a nice left hook here. Watch this. My man Milton still got it. I like it. Boom, son. My man Milton returns with a nice clean left hook, just like he's gonna return this hat with the tag sticking out of it when this fight's over. <laughs> best shot he has, right fucking there. The best shot Logan has right here. Watch the load. Loads the back hip, turns it over. He wants to throw that hook over the top of it too. All right, we're breaking down a little bit here. Trying to figure out what, what combination we're throwing here. All right, let's see it. Now we got it, now we got it. Oh, nope. Leans the wrong way. Woo, the hand speed there though. Watch Logan get caught right here. Boom, right in the eye. Have one of those. Again, you can't rely on head movement on the mitts. You can't rely on head movement in the fight, especially when you don't, <laughs> don't even fucking know what combination you're supposed to be throwing. Jesus Christ. Does this combo look familiar to you guys? That combination is the exact one he threw time and time again against KSI in their fight. It just shows still Logan's more comfortable on his back foot, allowing his opponent to come in and trying to catch that uppercut with the hook behind it. It's powerful, it's dangerous, he throws it with a lot of speed, and there is some technique behind it, so fair play. But will it win him the fight? Let's talk predictions. All right, so final prediction time. Listen, we, we've seen everything we're gonna see from Logan. We know what we get from Floyd. He's going to assess the situation. He's going to use his robot-like in-ring data-driven mind to see what Logan's doing in every instance of the fight. He's gonna take those middle pictures, readjust whatever game plan he has coming in and do exactly what he wants as the rounds go on. I really think that Floyd's gonna try to make an example out of Logan. He's gonna try to clown Jake by destroying his older brother. I truly believe that. As for the way Logan actually wins this fight, it's it's fairly simple. There's really two options he has because again, no one really wins or loses if this thing goes to the judges that aren't even there to begin with. And I saw True Jordy's interview with Logan and I've seen some other people say this where he just should make Floyd come to him. Floyd's never been embarrassed by going to a decision or going the distance with a guy that he probably should have put away. So if Logan is fine with having his hand held high right next to Floyd's like the draw with KSI and they come out with the participation trophy for everybody and we all clap, yay! Now where are the juice boxes? But if Logan wants to win this fight, he wants to go in there and knock Floyd out, he has to get Floyd to engage. He has to get him to exchange with him. You push Floyd back on the back foot and Floyd starts to look for that counter right hand off a lazy jab where Logan's popping it and he's falling by his hip and he's popping it and he's falling by his hip. Floyd's gonna try to pull and counter over the top. And if he does, and if he is a little over aggressive and he doesn't anticipate maybe the speed of a younger Logan Paul, that is one of the only scenarios I could see Logan actually catching Floyd because again, Logan's best punch is rear hand uppercut. Do I see it happening? Fuck no, but could it happen? It's a very, very small percentage chance, but it's still a fucking fight and it can happen. At the end of the day, I think Floyd does dominate this. And like I said, I think he takes Logan into deep water in those later rounds after Logan's probably punched himself out. Floyd starts to slip, starts to roll, starts to work the body of Logan. I think that's gonna be a key. And he pushes him back further and further until we see Logan Paul on the ropes, shoulders and biceps blown up like the anchor arms from SpongeBob and he just sits there eating shots into oblivion. So we're gonna see Floyd pull away in the later rounds. I think he wins by TKO or 
no one wins and we all get participation trophies, but in our minds, we saw Floyd go out there and clown this guy like the fucking circus it is. But you guys let me know in the comments down below, what do you think? Does someone actually win this fight? I want you all in here on June 6th because during our live stream watch party, guess we'll find out.